Hi there, this is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and we are talking today. This is a fire catcher's chat, and we're talking with Rachel Crawford. She's going to be the very first fire catcher that we're going to talk to in this manner. Uh, one of the ideas that we have is really to get your stories out there. Everybody has stories, and to share in the community and to share that we're not alone. The thing, what I love about the fire catchers and the flagging community, community at large is that although we may not actually be in churches with a lot of support, online we have found a really pl a great place that we can, we can connect. And so we want to just facilitate that even more and have chats with, with the, the fire catchers. And so, Rachel, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Yay. She she looks so beautiful, and I'm just, I, I woke up like this. <laughs> what does your shirt say? Oh, it says, um, "It takes a big heart to to help shape little minds." Right, because what are so? What is it that you do in your day job? Um, well, I have two jobs. I work in the morning time. I work as a floater teacher for a local daycare. Um, so I work with infants all the way up to six years old. And then in the afternoons, I work in the afternoon program for a Christian preschool, working with the pre-K class. And I do like the ministry part of the day. That's fantastic. And yeah. I know you've said in the groups before that you, you're teaching the little ones to worship. Yes. I bring every Friday or I try to do every Friday. Um, I'll bring my bag of uh, homemade streamers and like we'll pray beforehand and then I just lay them out on the table and I let them choose and then we'll put on some worship music and just I just watch them like catch the Holy Spirit and it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it is really, I mean, I, I've been watching you online for a number of years and Rachel, you just are so inspiring to me and to so many other flagging worshipers. Can you tell us when you started to, to flag? Um, actually this, uh, this upcoming February, it will be three years. Um, I started out kind of, um, we had a, a worship service at church where the, they were encouraging us to ask God for more in our worship. And uh, I come from a very, very conservative background. I grew up in church of Christ. So I, you know, as far as like, we didn't even have music in church no dancing, no hand raising, you know, so, but I knew there was more, there was something inside of me that just, I wanted more than just being able to raise my hand in church, and, and it started out that night with me just kind of swearing my arms back and forth, and then feeling the Holy Spirit, and, but after that, I had a vision of me dancing with flags, and I, it was so impactful and so beautiful that I just, like, I was driving and I had to pull over and I just started crying because it was just so gorgeous. And I asked a friend that she did uh, freestyle flagging in the back of our church. And I asked her, you know, what did she think that the dream meant? And she goes, honey, there's no interpreting that. You're called to flag. And so we were going to have um, an all night praise and worship service that Friday she said come to church and just pick out a, a pair of flags and just see what happens and so I picked out a pair of gold flags that matched the ones that were in the vision and I had never touched a set of flags a day in my life before this and I just felt so much freedom and it was just something about like being able to hold those flags and just like sway and move with the Holy Spirit. And I just, ever since then, it just kept going. And every time I touch a flag, the Holy Spirit shows me something new. <laughs> That's incredible. I, I'm sure that I know I can relate to that story. And I'm sure there's a lot of fire catchers that can relate to that story as well. It seems that it, it is, oh, well, that's nice. Look, <laughs> a little notification popped up. Oh, well. <laughs> um, okay, so in the summertime, you had posted it, that you were doing a 30-day worship challenge. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me 
or tell us how, why did you do that? First of all, like, like let's just start there. Why did you do that? <laughs> I did it because um, at the time, it kind of, it starts back, back in October of last year when it randomly in church, God told me that I was supposed to stay in the house that I was living in and live there with two Christian girls and make it a home for creative worship, intercession, and, um, and prayer. And I, I had been following through with that, but then everything kind of like started to unravel throughout the year. And by the time that the summer came around, I still didn't have roommates. I was fixing to be forced out of my home because our lease was up. And I'm like, okay, like this is something I didn't, I wasn't prepared for. So I prayed about it and I said, God, what do you want me to do? Like, do you, am I supposed to stay here? Am I supposed to trust you that you will, bring me roommates. What am, what am I doing? Cause I had no money, nothing. And he said, just worship. And so I kept in prayer about it. And then I heard the Holy spirit tell me that for 30 days I needed to worship every day, set at that time. And not only was I supposed to just worship for 30 days, but I was supposed to put it out there for people to see. And that's when I decided to do it live on Facebook every day for 30 days. That, so it really, I mean, it's a, I think maybe a lot of people think that's a great idea, but the execution of that, the, the, the commitment to do it, I'm sure that there was a days that you didn't feel like doing it, <laughs> that it was a lot of um, logistics to make the time because we get mm -hmm. in a day. Yeah. 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 Cause, um, I actually had some serious warfare that happened in the middle of all of it. Um, I got a really, really horrible sinus infection. And, um, so for about five of those days, uh, I was bedridden and I didn't, I wasn't able to put out a live video because I was so sick. And, but I chose, and even though technically the 30 days were over, I still chose for five extra days past the 30 days and worshiped and just told the, told the enemy, no, you're not going to interrupt this 30 days of worship. I'm just going to follow through with it. Well, it, it makes, it, it makes sense too of the attack on, on worship because Lucifer was the angel of worship, right? And right. all of that was stripped away. So it's such an affront to the enemy uh, mm -hmm. to do that worship. Can you tell me, uh, describe like what, what changed in you during that time? Um, well, the first thing was, um, because it took a lot of preparation for this because I didn't just, I, I know there are a lot of, um, people that flag and they, they prefer the choreographed style and, you know, everything is all planned out. And, and that works as, and it's effective for them. But for me, like I am completely just like all raw when I go into worship. And the only thing that I put into preparation was song choice. And so a lot of times I didn't really like plan it like the night before or something. It would be a song I would hear just hours before I would go live. And I'm like, that's the one. And then I would just like pray for a few minutes and then just let the Holy Spirit tell me what flags to use what colors um sometimes they only use one sometimes they use more than one and but it just i think the number one thing that changed to me at first was god got me out of my shell because i'm normally a I consider myself an introvert <laughs> because I tend to like, kind of prefer to stay off in the background, but God is like, no, you like, you, you need what I have for you is more towards the front. You're, you are a leader. And so I had to put myself out there and be brave, which is, um, I'm, was hard for me because I'm self-conscious about my body and, and what I look like when I dance and because I'm not a professional dancer of any kind and 
so there's that courage was the first thing that just sort of just changed within me and then the determination to finish because I've all I have a bad history of starting something and then not finishing it and but I did this even though I had that five days where I was bedridden I still went back and finished all 30 days that's incredible. I, I think that there are a lot of people that can can relate. Like when Jesus said, well done, my good and faithful servant, at, at the conclusion of when, of when he had given some talents to his servants, there's, there's an action. Of, it's actionable. It's finished to finish. And a lot of believers, we have great ideas to start. And that's why I said like the 30-day commitment Sure, that sounds like a good idea, but the, the execution of it is really difficult. And I love that you've shown because we wouldn't, wa watching that, we wouldn't have actually seen that internal struggle or yeah. think, oh no, she's she does this all the time. You don't do that all the time. No. And that you <laughs> put yourself out there. Um, again, I don't, I, there's so... I think that there probably are some people that are very comfortable with their body, but I think that the majority of us, myself included, and I know Rosie's talked about it, about body image. And when you, I mean, I've talked a lot about in the classes that like flags are not, you know, I'm going to stay hidden in the back. Flags are so big and broad and colorful. They're, they're almost are screaming, look at me, look at me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so it's not, like to understand it's really, there is turmoil there and it's obedience that you've done a lot of obedience mm -hmm. and what you, that, what you just said, what you changed that changed about you. So coming into what we wanted to focus on today was you are going to, uh, an exciting location yes. and, and I, so I would want to hear about where you're going and what the plan is and like we I, just before we had started chatting um i said i really believe that the, that your your faithfulness to fulfill what god did ask you to do for the 30 days is a res, like a, what's happening now and the way that he miraculously supports you mm -hmm. is phenomenal so tell us so tell us about what it is that you're doing um well, I am a second year student for the Day Spring School of Supernatural Ministry here in Springfield, Missouri. And um, part of our curriculum is to go on an overseas mission trip. And so I am going with a team of about 12 other people to Brazil. And I'm so excited. Um, it's a very expensive trip. It's going to cost about $3,500. And um, it, we will be working in an orphanage out there, so we will be working with children, um, obviously, and um, there's going to be a lot of creative outlets there, um, so they told me, bring your flags, and, um, and actually, um, aside from one or two other people, I'm pretty much the only, like, really, like, confident flagger in the whole group so I'm kind of be like leading into all of this <laughs> um, it's supposed to happen somewhere between April and May we don't have like a definite date just yet but it will happen in that in the springtime of some time probably before we have graduation in May um, so we are um, I, I am beyond like, I'm nervous, but excited because I mean, I've never been overseas before, but this is just the beginning of, I mean, when I first started flagging about a couple months into it, God told me that I would dance for him all over the world. And so when I, I when he brought me to, to DSSM and I was going for the second year and they said, we're going on an overseas mission trip. And I'm like, Oh, here we go. It's <laughs> starting. <laughs> so um, right now I'm just in a preparation of trying to fundraise to get the money for this because that's, that's an expensive trip and I'm just a preschool teacher. <laughs> it is an expense. Brazil, I mean, Brazil is expensive to, to be in. It's an expensive country. And, uh, and then you also, I know as a team, 
most teams try to be a blessing to where they're going. And so with the orphanage. And so um, when, so you would, I'd seen that on, in Facebook, on Facebook in one of the groups and my heart just really leapt because what Catch the Fire Worship Flags does is to be on fire for his king, to build his kingdom. And we, it started that way. We've been funding a lot of different things um, kind of behind the scenes. Now we're kind of a little bit more open about, we really want to support the people that are doing, doing the work and you're mm -hmm. doing the work. And so I had told you that we're going to, we have uh, an, a program that we're going to support you and help you fundraise mm -hmm. that you have us, you have a particular link. And one of the ways that, so that we can help you is we're giving you 20, 20% of the revenue of sales through your, through a, a unique link. So we'll have that link uh, at the bottom. And if you purchase any worship flags from that link, then we will, that'll be directly given to Rachel at, for your trip. Um, I've also, I'm going to be supplying you with a, some travel worship flags so that you can take another set down. So they've actually been shipped. So you should get them. I'm assuming tomorrow. Tomorrow or Friday. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's exciting. Is there any, what else are you, what else are you doing or what else can we partner with? Um, I also sell $5 jewelry. That's what I've been doing to support my ministry in general. But, um, so if I, that's, there has been extremely uh, beneficial, especially right now with Christmas coming up. Yep. Like people are like looking for great stocking stuffers. So this $5 jewelry, um, the only drawback to it is that, um, yeah, it's an, I can only sell it to people within a U.S., Guam or Puerto Rico. So that's kind of, kind of limits me a little bit on that. Um, but so there, that is one outlet that I have. I also am in the, in the, midst of beginning to create some prophetic art that God has basically put on, pressed on by my heart to do. And I'm hoping to start it this weekend. And so basically I'm, I'm not going to be putting a, a price on the artwork. It's just basically if, if it speaks to someone and they want to purchase it, then they, whatever the, the Lord presses upon them heart for the price, then that's what the price is meant to be. Um, this particular art is like a, is a combination of um, vision boards and um, I don't really know how to explain it. It's like, it's like vision boards and a collage in a way. Um, basically I paint the background and then I find various like words and phrases or pictures and things in magazines and then cut them and put them onto the background and then it's supposed to the way that the holy spirit is telling me is that it's supposed to speak in, an, in a powerful way for somebody and it, it's like a direct message for a person so that's what that's what the holy spirit says i'm gonna i'm gonna be obedient and go for it um i'm not i've never really done the art thing before so but I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and do this. I, I, I really love that. I mean, really, Holy Spirit is so creative in, in, um, in making things happen. There's an abundance of heaven, and we get to partner with that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that if someone has a direct donation that they'd like to um, help you with, that that would be okay as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I <laughs> Yes, I mean, um, I already received a, a $300 donation from some people over at DSSM um, from a first-year tribe, a tribe of first-year students gathered together for prayer, and they, the Lord specifically spoke my name, and so I, I got $300 just directly donated. That's um, brilliant. So, yeah. when, so when, is, when do you need to have your first installment? Um, I really need to get it started by January 14th. That's when we start when this new semester starts. Um, then once the new semester starts, I can give more updates on what's going on because they'll start to have uh, more specific on when we have to get so much in, uh, in. 
but they're not like they're really really free with the holy spirit so like if like if they have an installment and but you don't have all of that right then they're not it's not like it's gonna i'm not gonna be penalized for it like they're just gonna keep pressing in the prayer that that money will come through because we've had students go overseas before and everything doesn't get paid for until the night before they're getting on the plane you know so like they just rely completely on the holy spirit but i the Holy Spirit is telling me I really need to get the ball rolling um, and have something to put in by January 14th and just, just throw it all in the pot. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I'm so, thank you for letting us partner with you, getting your message. Yes. And we can't, I can't wait to hear more, more updates. And then obviously we'll have to have you back after you've been to Brazil. Oh, of course. <laughs> So we will have all of the contact information below the video and we will be put posting that video uh, everywhere we can in our yeah. in groups uh, as well as on my YouTube channel uh, and then and any contact information for Rachel we will include there so that if you feel so led to donate directly to her you may do that I will have the link for worship flags I encourage you to to purchase some worship flags to elevate your praise uh, to the next level and, and step out like Rachel has done. And then she also has the jewelry and the prophetic art, which sounds exciting. So we'll make sure those are all available. Thank you so much, Rachel, for your time. Uh, we'll say goodbye. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Bye.